This is Andrew Hodges, forensic psychiatrist and forensic profiling. We've been talking about the Natalie Holloway case, the new way of profiling using the unconscious mind reading between the lines, using a person's thought prints. Remember, thought designs from the unconscious mind like we have designs on the tips of our fingers and in so doing a criminal, whenever he talks in written documents or in interrogations, if he's guilty, he's going to give us the whole story of the crime. That's the nature of the unconscious mind. We're getting a new look with the breakthrough to the unconscious mind, which this is based on, to the criminal mind. We're seeing that where current profilers uh, have, have uh, the previous way of profiling, we've overlooked that the unconscious mind cannot be stopped. We talk about how sociopathic people are and how they're hardened sociopaths. We've missed that deep down they're still going to communicate and they're still going to confess if they were involved. And we've seen this in Deepak's case. So just some afterthoughts about what Deepak told us uh, as I look back. We want to think about the things we said and how strikingly his five-page email uh, five days after this disappearance of Natalie Holloway is indeed the story, the thought print story of this crime and what happened. Uh, it's the whole crime. It's the whole story in a nutshell. And it is a story from, from beginning to end, and he uses this very word story. But as we look back over, we think of how what he's told us matches what we know about the crimes, what I will call the crime scene. First of all, he's, he's uh, told us, and we've come to see, this email, this supposedly email, which was the, his original story of the crime, was a cover-up. Because he later confessed, hey, this email was a lie. But see, what the unconscious mind does when the conscious mind tells a lie, the unconscious mind uses that to tell the truth, as we will hear in the imagery, in the thought print patterns, he tells us the truth. For example, major shift in this case away from the one-on-one -on -one story back to three boys being with her. Not one boy on the beach alone with her uh, and left her there, but three boys were with her all the way to the end. It matches that. Uh, also, we see, uh, we know that uh, he tells us that she is in a hole. The body of Natalie Holloway is in a hole. It's deep in the water. What do we know about the Aruban oceanography? There's a trench. There is an underwater trench out about three miles where the, where the land suddenly drops down into a trench that's about a half a mile deep and it drops from 300 feet to 800 to 1,000 feet. goes out about another half a mile comes back to 300 feet. And it matches. The profile in the letter matches the oceanography. We also know a cage went missing that very night from Fisherman's Huts, which uh, he's told us that her body is in a cage. He uses several container references in his story. So we know that. We also know the boys had access to a boat right next to Fisherman's Huts, right next to the Holiday Inn, and that they had access to a boat. So they had access to a boat, a cage was stolen. He tells us this email was a lie, so he's a liar, but in between the lines is the truth, and then he uh, tells us of where in the ocean it is, that she's in a hole, she's in a container. Uh, as we think back through the imagery, and you think right brain, left brain. The left brain listening is the conscious story, just the cover up. Right brain is the imagery he uses, the thought print patterns. Right brain being more imagery oriented, more symbolic. Left brain being more literal. So we pay attention to the imagery. What is he trying to say in his images? And we think back to the images. The death images, she fell asleep, she fell down. We think about the, uh, the assault images, they were, they, were, they were sharks, they were players. He makes reference to an explicit sexual contact in the back seat and he makes references to her being not nude, not against her will, again read through the denial. He then makes references to asphyxiation, she had way too much to drink, he emphasizes that, which also portrays her in the ocean. She's now in the ocean. What, he made other ocean references. As we, as we think back to those ocean references, the striking ocean references of ocean trips and swimming with the sharks, the sharks underwater, deep on the ocean, he may explain that she fell on the floor getting out of the car. Read, she fell on the floor getting out of the boat. Her body's there. So her body is in a cage. He makes cage references, references to, to bathtubs. Uh, in Iran's book, we see a reference to a jacuzzi. Natalie got in a jacuzzi with Iran Reed. Uh, she's she's uh, in a container. And then finally, he gives geographical references. She's in a hole, Natalie Holloway, and he gives instructions. Find the body, bring her up. He tells us unconsciously uh, he wants this case solved. So criminals, unconsciously, when they commit a crime or guilty, 
and they want uh, the case to be solved unconsciously as much as they fight. Now this means we're also, we have two types of listeners in profiles. Those who listen only for the conscious mind and their body pox cover-up stories are those who listen for the unconscious thought prints, the messages from the unconscious mind. It's all in your view of the mind. Which, which one is the criminal mind? If you want more details, you can go to my website, Forensic Thought Prints, and there you can see the book I wrote on the case, Into the Deep, which is Deepak's roadmap to solving this case and finding the body of Nellie Holloway in the ongoing search for her body.